Armstrong Sr., born November 14, 1927. And he passed on May 17, 2023. Nine five years. And from this point, I'm going to call him Dad because that's what I always call him. Dad was survived by sons and daughter in laws, daughters and son in laws, Kenneth Alfie Johns, Gwen Cyber. Sarah Thorne, Patsy Stinson, and Nancy O'Rourke. He had 19 grandchildren. And we couldn't get the number for the greats and the great greats. He was preceded in death by his wife, Doris Annette Johns, his son, Russell Johns, Jr. Brothers John Thomas, Willie Ben, his sisters, Annie Mae Riles, and Mabel Jewel, Mabel Jewel Taylor, and his mother, Addie Pearl Kirkland, and his father, Alpha Johns. Let us pray this morning. Lord, we thank you for a life that was lived before us. Father, we thank you for a man that gave his life to you and committed to that service. Father, we come to celebrate and we just ask that you comfort the family here today. We ask that you just give them strength, the strength of their father, to carry on and to live a life like he lived. Father, we thank you for your son most of all, and we thank you for your spirit that is with us. We just ask that you stay with each member in the days to come. Hold this family tight as they walk through this time. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.
ones that have come when they were called, the ones that showed up. Dad, he thought family was very important. We thank you for the flowers and for all your thoughts and your continued prayers. And for me and my box, we thank you for the food. <laughs> um, this is probably the hardest service I've ever had to stand at. And I've done this a lot of times. But what makes it so hard is that Dad called and asked me to do it. So I'm going to do my very best. And I'm going to ask God to speak to you today. Because that's what Dad would want. In the Bible, and you won't find this version in your Bible, I read my Bible from 30,000 feet. And I think that's the way Dad would like me to give it to you. So in Luke chapter 14, verses 27 and 28, the Bible says this. Anyone that does not carry their own burden and follow me cannot be my disciple. Suppose one of you wants to build a new storage building. Do you not first check how inflation has raised the cost at Breed Loves to see if you have enough money to finish it? Because if you start the building and end up having to put tarps on the roof, everyone who sees it will make fun of you and spread your foolishness all over town. They will tell everyone that they meet that you are a person that does not finish and I want to talk to you this morning for just a few minutes about lessons I learned from the Father. Dad finished what he started. He did it his way. His way was sometimes different than other people did it, but he did it his way. And I'm going to tell you that I'm not the closest son-in-law because there, I believe every other son-in-law here was closer in relationship with Dad. But we did have a very good relationship. And it took a while to get there because at first he didn't like me. And that's hard to believe. <laughs> but to the other brother in laws, he didn't like you either. <laughs> <laughs> he lived his life on his terms. He served in the Navy, and that was his pride as he served in the Pacific Campaign. And he joined the Navy in 1945 at 17 years old. He worked for 50 years. And when I look at you, I think he worked a lot longer. He was married for 97 years. No, let me go back. I missed that, didn't I? He was married for 67 years. Married for 67 years, and in those 95 years, she raised a family, and that was hard. He had a marriage that lasted, and that was hard. In the 67th year, that was still hard. I'm talking to you of, about a man that finished what he started. Marriage doesn't get to a point where it's just easy, folks. It 
is something that you work at, and building a family is something that you work at. I'm going to miss the phone calls. I'm going to miss hearing him call and ask how you're doing and hanging up when he couldn't understand your response. Okay, I'll let you go. Dad loved, he loved to read. He never stopped learning. He went through some very hard situations, but he was blessed in every situation he found himself. Give you a few things that he loved. He loved not wearing his hearing aids. <laughs> As long as he could turn the volume on the TV to 100 and watch the Atlanta Braves and you would shut up. He was fine with that. And he loved God's team also. The Crimson Tide. And he thought any Tigers were of Satan. That made my life easier. I remember one time my oldest son had a brilliant idea. And he said, Dad, I want to talk to you about something. And he says, Don't get mad, just think for a minute. I only want to get one ear pierced, not both, just one. And my wife come up with a brilliant idea. She said, son, ask your papa, and if he agrees, we're fine with it. <laughs> Dad spent 95 years training for what comes next. Dad loved his girls. He was very protective. And I learned this. He believed that girls ought to grow up to be ladies. He believed that boys ought to grow up to be men. And he believed that a man should never put on a dress. He was proud of his boys. And let me say this. Dad had some good son-in-laws too. Because we were scared as hell not to be. <laughs> In his life, he lost his parents. And something no one should have to face. He lost his oldest son. And eight months ago, he lost the love of his life. I think with all my heart, Dad thought it was his job to outlive mom to make sure that she was not left alone. We used to visit Andalusia and there was a three year period that every time I would come here I would get the car going home and I would become physically ill. I'm talking about sick. And I determined it was the water. Because Andalusia's got the worst water on the planet. And after a while I realized it was God saying, You haven't done what I asked. I know Dad made several professions of faith. I know he was baptized. But this was 20 years ago, and one afternoon we were sitting in the living room, and I looked at Dad, and I said, Dad, I've got a question for you. If you were to die today, what do you think would happen? Where would you go? 
And I thought he was old then. He said, I've never really thought about it. And I said, don't you think it's time? And then asked Jesus Christ to come into his heart and life. And I believe that day he did. I've watched Dad move through the years and change through the years. Become more loving through the years. And let me say this to all the men in the room. It was hard for Dad to say I love you to a man. In his generation, it just wasn't done. But it didn't mean he didn't care for you. It didn't mean he didn't love you. And what makes this so hard is that Dad expected the very best out of you. He expected everything that his family did to do it exceptionally. He had a lot of jobs, the Navy, the shipyard, the box factory, the plywood mill, the upholstery shop, and then he would get side gigs. He would uh, go to the courthouse and say, let me redo all the chairs in the courthouse. Now that's an undertaking, but dad told me it was all right to work your kids. But you could give them some sandpaper and let them go to town. He loved his family and cared for his family very deeply. And I say this with all my heart. He was so protective of his family that no one, if he could stop it, would hurt him. He thought all of you were his children. He carried the weight of the world on his shoulders when he lost his parents and his oldest son, and then when mom passed. He believed he was blessed with more than he needed. this room and I think about what mom and dad had and they approached life with that feeling that they had more than they needed dad would give to his children after he gave to the church and the work of God's ministry and I can remember some Dad say, I send the money to St. Jude each month because those little kids don't have anything. And as I look across this room, I think how many here have ten times more or a hundred times more than he ever had? find it hard to give a cup of water. Dad felt like giving was part of what God called him to do. And he spent 95 years in training for what comes next. He was getting ready for something after this life. And if your hope today is just in this life, you're a sad person. You'll leave here sad because if this life is all there is, it's full of trouble. But Dad believed that there was life after death and that he would leave this world and he would see Russell again. He would see his wife again, and as much as that would make him happy, I believe today that he's thrilled that he's with Jesus Christ. But I think
think he would want you to know that he wants you there too. John said it this way. That in life you train for what's coming. And I believe dad was training for what John saw. John said in Revelation 20, I saw those who were seated on the thrones and given power to judge and reign with Christ. And that's what dad is doing. He's getting ready to judge and reign with the creator of the universe. Today we celebrate all that he did. We celebrate his life, his love, and his legacy. Because as I look at my family, I can tell you, you would not be what you are without Russell Jones. Dad finished what he started. And when Dad met a mom in the Navy, he had a job that at that time, you really had to want to do. Because you didn't get paid enough to raise a family. And he did it with pride. He loved his country, but he loved his family first. And Dad knew that it was important to keep it in that order. That you keep God first, family second, Life's not easy, but Dad would tell you that his suffering was nothing like our Savior's. That times were hard, but he was blessed. That he cared for his family the very best that he could. And he did it his way, on his terms, and in his time. And two weeks ago, I think it was when Ricky took him to the doctor. He didn't even know he was sick. And he thought that the 
hospital probably had something to do with that. But he has mind. And he loved each one and he was so thankful for what everyone did for him. Psalms 127 says that like a warrior, blessed is a young man whose quiver is full of children because when he sends them out with the right information, Stop doing it your way and do it my way. And I watched that over the years become more like Christ every day. You see, it's not something that happens overnight. It's something that we walk with. Day by day to be more like our Savior. He grew more like Christ every day. And my Bible says, when I see him, I will be like him. What a wonderful day. He doesn't need to hear an answer. Everyone who calls on the name of Christ will be saved. It's not a maybe, folks. But it's not something that you can do with your head. It's something you have to do with your heart. You have to believe that Jesus Christ gave everything. pays you seven million dollars don't you think they have some expectation and that's how it is with God you can't earn your way but he does have expectations that day by day you will be more like him for all that he's given you for all that dad gave Spirit, touch hearts. Help them to see how much you love them and care for them. And if they don't know you, Father, as, as 
as their personal Savior. Help them. Lead them. To call on you. To just ask. So that they can learn day by day how to live a life and become more like you. So that one day we can all be together again. In the name of the only Son of God, Jesus Christ, we pray.
1927 to the world, a very important thing happened. A thing we call TV was first displayed. But for the Johns family and to their world and now your world, that really didn't matter much for, for the deal with baby boy was happening. And now 95 years later, a beautiful wife of 67 years, six children, 19 grandchildren, greats and great greats, families and friends, what a life. What a life. Just think about it, in those 95 years, some of the things he saw from, from airplanes, the first airplanes, from ships to spaceships, from picking cotton to cotton pickers, from moonshine to bed. <laughs> from wood stoves to microwaves, from Billy Graham to Joel Osteen, the home, the vehicles, the quality of life, the world changed, literally changed around him, but it didn't change him. And today we celebrate him. Today we gather in a hard place the death of a loved one, someone who has impacted your life for all of your life. Think about that. He's impacted your life for all of your life. No doubt he left an impression on your life, in your life. That's the reason you're here today. But I'm glad there's one thing you can rest assured of that during this time of grief and brokenness, if you will allow him, there's one that is standing with you because the Bible says this of God. He is near to them of a broken heart. And today your hearts are surely broken as we, as we mourn the loss of a loved one. Your loved one. The one many of you call Daddy, Papa, or as one daughter said, my sweet, feisty, independent Daddy. Probably a pretty good description of him. Again, on behalf of the friends, or on behalf of the family, thanks to all you friends for being here, for all that you've done. For the kindness you shall continue to pray for them, continue to care for them, love them, because now this family begins life without him, without either of their parents. Because no matter how old you are, we always need our parents. There's much you can be said concerning Mr. Johns. Pastor Rick done a great job telling about him and his life. But even last night, I heard I heard several people just talking, saying things from memories such as, man, that guy can cook. Did you ever read his cooking? Another one said, I'm afraid of him. One said, he was my friend. And all of you have your stories and descriptions of him as we celebrate and mourn his life at the same time. So many memories, no doubt, for each of you have come flooding back to your mind. And as during the last few days, you'll recall the times in your life that he and, and mom was part of the memories and part of your life. Through the years, there's been laughter, there's been tears, there's been joy, there's been pain as you've remembered and talked about life stories and life lessons that, that they've been part of. But now... Now the one you love is gone, and, and only the memories and the stories remain. But I thank God that, that he gave us memories, and we can hold on to those memories when we can no longer hold on to our loved one. He'll be missed. Man, will he be missed. There'll never be another one just like him. Some of you say amen. Some of you say thank God. That was him. Although some of you will find yourself with many of his characteristics, especially as time goes by, some of you are gradually turning into your mom and dad. Saying and doing things they said, actions they made, maybe looks or gestures that they would give you, you're now giving your children and grandchildren. You've been taught many lessons in, the, lessons in life and about life through their life. Not all lessons are learned through success stories. Not everything you've done was success. There's, there's as many lessons learned in failures as they are in success. And so I challenge you right now, remember the lessons you've been taught through the years. Gain wisdom from the time that he got it right and improve on the things 
Don't make the same mistakes of when it was wrong. Again, much time can be spent telling stories about him and about them. It's hard for me as I was making a few notes, you can't hardly talk about him without talking about them and her. Each of you could tell your favorite story, and I encourage you to tell those stories often. Tell them to the grands and the great grands and the great greats. Let them get to know them through telling stories of them. It keeps their memory alive. And surely you'll laugh when you tell some of these stories. You'll cry when you tell some of those stories, when you remember the past. But most of all, every time you tell those stories, you get to love again and live again and laugh again along the way. See, I, I realize that even in times such as this, we can say as Job, who went through some tough times, and even death of loved ones in his family, yet Job stood and he said, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away, but blessed be the name of the Lord. For all those here today, I want to remind you just for a few moments that although death has invaded your family and invaded your life, it's good to know that death is not a prison. Death is a doorway into an eternity. An appointment that we'll all have to attend is death. You can't call in, you can't make an excuse. The Bible says it's important, appointed to the man once to die. But the good news for those who make Jesus Christ their Lord and Savior, death is not a prison, it is a doorway into the paradise of the presence of God forever. And I challenge each one of you today, be ready for eternity. God is with you today, family, to help you. He's here to strengthen you. The Apostle Paul writes, and it's true, and it applies to you today. The Apostle Paul wrote to a young man named Timothy, and he said this, The Lord stood at my side, and he gave me strength. The Lord is here to help you and strengthen you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. God is with you today. But not only today, tonight, when, when everything is, when people have left and gone home and things try to get back to normal and you sit there, he'll be with you then. He's, you, he's here to help you in a time of grief and pain and sorrow. But I'm glad he's not here just to be a savior, to save us from our grief and pain. He's here to save us from our sin, to help us prepare us for eternity of heaven. And I challenge you today, I will just take just a moment because as you pause, as you have stopped everything you was doing and going to do today for this time of death, I challenge you to do an inventory of your life. Are you ready to meet the Lord? Are your, is your life being led by God, walking in His will and in His way according to His word? I, I trust that today as we celebrate His life, but I trust also a day that, that you make sure as well that, that you in your life is right with God. And you have made peace with God. It's no secret. You've heard it all your life. Nobody's promised tomorrow. Nobody's promised to live 95 years. Today is the day for you to stop and you to pause do an inventory of your life. Put out a, just turn off the world around you for a moment. Think about you and your life and your eternity. Family, first of all, thank you for allowing me to say a few words and be part of this. Love this man, this, this family. But I want to encourage you for a moment. Life is different. Mom and dad are gone. The glue, the fabric that holds the family together is, is no longer. It's now going to take some work on your part, some love on your part, and believe me, some patience on your part to keep this family close, keep it together. I pray that you as a family will become closer than ever before. You'll love one another as they expect you to love one another. Care for one another. Look beyond the little faults that Lord knows we all have. Care for one another. Continue to call one another. Check on one another. Look beyond our little faults that often keep us apart and often say, I love you. Those are precious words. Remember the things you've been taught. Carry on the family traditions, amen? Most of all, I encourage you, I challenge you, each one of you, 
love the Lord with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your body. And love your neighbor and your family as yourself. It's God's command. He will be missed. Things will be different now. Things has changed. Things changed when, when mom passed away. You had to make some adjustments. And now another major change has taken place. Things are different without them. You're going to have to make more adjustments. <laughs> Rick alluded to it, that, that visit, that phone call. It'll be greatly missed. It, it might have been a bother to answer the phone when you looked down and saw he was calling, but I will assure you, you'll miss it. That time that you got to visit. For you, I guess all of you, you never know life without him. Don't know what it is to live life. This is going to be a new experience for you. But you'll make it if you allow the Lord to help you. And I pray for you today. I, I pray for you, family. Over the last couple of weeks, we've been praying diligently. We've been praying for healing. We've praying for God to work miracles in his life. But most of all, we've been praying for God's will. And this is God's will at this time. And I pray you will let the Prince of Peace, the Prince of Peace, which is one of the many titles given to Jesus, let him reign in your life. Because when the Prince of Peace reigns in your life, there's a peace that passes understanding as you face the days ahead. And I pray, my prayer for this family is that one day, every one of you, every one of you, by the grace of God and through the blood of Jesus, will meet again on the paradise of heaven. In the paradise of heaven. What a privilege you were given to have him in your life, all of your life. 95 years the Lord gave him a beautiful family that God gave him. A legacy. You are a legacy that he leaves behind. You're the children, the grands, and the greats that will carry on the family family heritage. And I look at you and have been privileged to be around you. I can agree with the songwriter who said, I see the evidence of the goodness of God on this family. So today we bless you as we honor this, this great man. He left the world. He left the world as a 95-year-old feeble man. But he's not old anymore. He's not feeble anymore. Forever young in the presence of God. I wonder if we would even recognize him now. <laughs> but forever young. In the presence of God. Thank God no more pain. No more sorrow. He said he'll wipe every tear from our eye. How beautiful the presence of God. Thank God. For the legacy he leaves behind. For the life you got to enjoy. Thank God. For a good day. Let's pray. Heavenly Father. We love you. We thank you for your goodness. And for your mercy. For your grace. For your greatness. Lord, you didn't have to leave him here these many years. You chose to leave him here these many years. You knew this family needed him. You knew the lessons and the life that he was teaching them and training them for. And now you called him home. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But God, it's not the end. You gave it an opportunity to be a beginning. God, may this be the beginning that each one of these plans for that family reunion that's going to take place in heaven. Today is just an invitation for a family reunion that's going to take place on the shores of heaven. Not, not over on Hop Avenue, but in a mansion on streets of gold. God, I pray today that each one will make preparations. Today, from this day forward, Together, the family reunion is going to take place. Thank you for his life. Thank you for the legacy. Thank you for the love. Bless God. I pray. Bless this family in the days to come. We ask it in Jesus' name.